Yo, what is going on YouTube? It is your boy GZTV. Sorry, my camera is a little delayed. Let's try that again. Okay, hopefully we that made it better. Let's try again. It is your boy GZTV, and we are back with the Dynasty Series where we are taking the UTEP Miners and trying to win a national championship. Last episode, we played our first five games of the regular season, and now we are here with Conference USA Play against FIU. But first, okay, so when I'm recording, it is super bruh, covered. Bruh, bruh. Let me look at this, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it working? Is it working? Oh, my God. Okay, I think I fixed it. So if you guys watched the last episode, we obviously, you know, recruited a bunch of these players. Uh, if I have to, I'm just going to remove my face cam. We have Pombrian, Toomer, Jorge Rico, Tresman, Braverman, Martin Lord, Morgan Gideon, Eduardo Torres, and Cisco. Obviously, like, Torres and Rico are still looking at we haven't really had to put that many hours in. People aren't really that interested. We're just going to let that cook. I think we're going to be able to have them commit by the end of the week. But let's get into what my plan is for the week. So for this week, we are planning on recruiting a running back, a right tackle, both a right guard and a left guard. We're going to get a right end, a D tackle, a middle linebacker, and a cornerback. So there is our plan of action. For each position, I'm going to go through, pick a player, we're going to kind of just send them a contract if there's no no competition. We can just keep it at that for the week, but we're going to start sending out some scholarships. For running back, it's really between Manuel Amaro and Terrence Wilbin, and I kind of want a receiving back, plus we are actually on the list. So we're going to go with Manuel Amaro, and we are actually going to send him a contract. We're going to offer him a scholarship because you see there, Northern Texas has comp with us. Pretty much for halfback and like cornerback, we're gonna go for three stars, but the rest we can just do two stars in all honesty. And I think the next week, just for fun, we are going to recruit Manuel or scout Manuel Amaro and see what he can do. For left tackle, we are going Alejandro Cutrera. And we have no comp there, so we're just going to put him on the recruiting board to see what happens. There's obviously a lot of teams that are like going for him, but we can put in some recruiting hours soon. For left guard, we're going to go ahead and go with Gene Sherry. And for right guard, we're just going to go with the first guys available, Major Gurley, which is pretty dope. And in this case, Gene Sherry actually has some comp there. So we're going to go ahead, offer him up a scholarship, kind of compete with Arizona there. For right end, we are going to go ahead and go for Jabari Finnerty. And honestly, for D-tackle, we're probably going to half to, you know, go for a guy like Rick Hussein, who is a three-star. So let's go for him. And we might as well go for Nate Umana because he's actually on, we're actually on his interest list. Let's see what he has. A lot of contract offers. So I think for Umana, we might just go ahead and do like that and an action. Add an action. We might do like contact friends and family, do something that for like that for him. Because if we can get him on the team, that would be cool. Plus he's from Dallas, which isn't that far from, what is it, El Paso? Yeah, it shouldn't be too far away. Last, but certainly not least, for cornerback, we can go ahead and go with, we need zone corners, obviously. We can go with Ramon De La No, let's go with Rico Rodriguez. So I think that about does it for the week. We can kind of let things cook out a little bit. So let's get into FIU. Getting into Florida International. This is a very winnable game for us, but we are going to be in Florida. So it's going to be kind of tough. Let's see what Florida International's walkouts looking like. That would be kind of sick. I don't think they do anything too crazy. Obviously they have a little bit of like cool school pride, but it's the Conference USA. Most shit is pretty lame with these schools. Their stadium's kind of cool, though, like nice in kind of like a metro Florida area. We're here at Ricardo Silva Stadium, 1-3 and three FIU, kind of like the same spot we're at in our season almost. All right, time to jump to the end of the game, and we're going to see what we do by the fourth quarter. I seriously don't know what is happening with this stupid-ass team. I, oh, my God. It is so poverty you know taking a look at this uh i mean they punt it to us we have four minutes 25 to get something going so we'll see what we can do on this drive this is a pretty important drive here for skylar locklear and the boys third and ten already and we just dump it off we're gonna kick it off to them and i think oh my god bro went for it on fourth down we get the two-point conversion it's a field goal game no matter what, our defense just always fucking sells. They get down in field goal range. The hope here is that they only get a field goal and we can come down on a game-winning drive, and it looks like our defense is going to be able to do that for us. They kick the field goal. Let's cancel the sim, go to slow mode, and watch the game. Here we go. Skyler Locklear looking for a game-winning drive. We need a touchdown. 
bit of some stadium pulls here. Locklear finds a open, and we're going to get a first down on the first play of the game. 269 yards and two touchdowns for Mr. Locklear. Glitchy ass stat line. What is that? It is the two-minute warning. We have the ball first and ten. It is kind of rainy out here at Florida International. Let's see what he can get going, and he is going to complete another pass down the middle. we got to be kind of careful here to manage some clock. We don't want to get down the field too quickly because then Florida International is going to have a chance to go down to the other end, but here is Locklear. He's going to hand it off. Oh, my goodness. We are cooking up this drive, and, yeah, we're going to call a timeout for some dumbass reason. What is our coach doing? I mean, I guess I'm the coach, but I'm not making the decisions, and Skyler Locklear is going to throw it across the middle. I'm not going to lie. I am chewing clock right here, but I'm also not very hands-on with the team. I wish I could actually like, coach them up and tell them some things, but I really can't. What is Lock Dude, Locklear is such a choke artist. My God. This dude chokes any chance he gets. We're going to see if the defense can get a stop. And if they do, I'll show you guys the screen. They are going to kneel it out on Florida International. But we are so trash. We just don't know how to close out games. We lose to FIU 34-28. to I'm going to try to get to the end of the season. I already know we're not going to get a bowl game. But the recruiting is on the up and up. Because, boys, that is going to be the focus. As Keon Jenkins, 235 yards, 69% completion, 4 tutties. Insane. Looking at the stats real quick, I mean, Skyler Locklear had a pretty good game besides the pick at the end. 23 for 39, 316 yards with the touchdown. You look at the rushing, so unfortunate he threw a pick. Really good game for Javon Jackson, 15 carries, 81 yards, obviously. We had a nice little run there for Wayne Strong. He's been coming in the game and having some pretty solid ones. Looking at the receiving, you see some good games out of a guy like Corey Foster, 8 for 131 and a tutty. Good game for Amari White. Couple good receptions. Solid game for Giovanni Gardner Gard and Ashton Nickelberry continue to get a couple of consistent touches. We're probably just gonna do five games an episode. I don't think I'm gonna play seven here because that feels I feel like the video is gonna be fucking long as shit. We are now one and five on the season, 0 oh and three in conference. Someone has something has to change around here. So we get Jorge Rico. We didn't get the other guy, unfortunately, but we still get Jorge. Rico, there's a high risk of fucking transfer for a lot of these players as we are going into another Conference USA game against Kennesaw State. Let's get to recruiting. I'm not going to lie, for every three-star, I'm about to just send some crazy shit. Like for Manuel Morrow, we might have to send the house. He is a three-star. I'm down to just send the house on everybody. Kind of look at the overview of these players. No one is offering contracts yet. So for him, we can just offer his and be the first. Just offer scholarships to all the two stars that don't have competition, and if they do, do something else. Because a conference option, like here, we need to offer a contract. For, for Rick Hussein, we need to offer that and probably contact friends and family. Just kind of get some stuff going. Umana, everyone is offering him some stuff. I'm down to maybe DM the player and see if we can get some momentum. Rodriguez, no one's offered him a scholarship. Not competition for him. I know I kind of speed ran that recruiting, but if we want to get more games done with this episode, we can do that. Yeah, I'm going to be a little more fast so I don't have as much to edit. This is a very good game in Conference USA play. Kennesaw State Owls against the UTEP Miners. We are going to Kennesaw State. I actually did a Road to Glory. I didn't do it on the YouTube channel, but I have played at Kennesaw State. So again, this is pretty interesting. Yeah, we're just going to go kind of rapid fire, you know, work on recruiting throughout the weeks. Here we go. Here come the Kennesaw State Owls. You know, it's kind of getting into that fall, wintry season. We're about halfway through the college football season, and we are here to play the Kennesaw State Owls. Pretty lame walkout, if you ask me. They're playing at literally a fucking high school field. Like, there's high school fields in Texas that are, like, way back bigger than this. Fifth, third stadium. A bit indecisive there on the stadium name. All right, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Here we are, fourth quarter. It's actually looking pretty solid here. As you can see, play to the end of the game. It is 24 to 20 with five minutes left, and we went for it and didn't get it. Let's see what Kennesaw State does here. They forced a fumble out of us, and now it's looking like Kennesaw State is going to score. I mean, we can't catch a fucking break. This is not looking good whatsoever. We, I mean, we have we fumbled the ball. They returned it for like 50 yards, and they were already in the red zone. Obviously, that means they scored a touchdown. Skyler Locklear doing everything he can, I guess. I don't know what we're supposed to do when we're this fucking trash. 
Third and 12 for Skyler Locklear, and he is going to complete it to Corey Foster. If we can come down, and we're, we're getting down to the goal line here. We score a touchdown there. Let's see if our defense can get a stop. We get go for two, and we fucking brick it, of course. I mean, my God, our defense just keeps on giving up these big-ass plays for no fucking reason. Like, can we get a goddamn stop? Our defense should not be allowing this much scoring every fucking game against conference USA teams as they go fourth and four they're gonna punt it to us and we they miss the field goal so we're actually gonna go on slow here and we are going to bring out another opportunity for Spencer Locklear to come down and win the game can you please convert one of these he's losing his aura <laughs> he lost his aura with the abilities we're gonna have to go into no huddle here let's see what Mr. Locklear can do second and three we're not doing too bad here this isn't bad I don't even know why they tried a field goal there and he's going to throw it and that is going to be incomplete third and three obviously four down territory with a minute 23 left for Mr. Locklear to go to work he has no time in the pocket and that is fourth and 11 we're gonna have to huddle quick huddle it to the line of fourth and 11 if we don't get this they're just going to be able to kneel the ball and win the game so it's pretty much over why is this team so fucking bad i don't know what's happening and he throws another pick i mean can this guy just knock it the fuck off already yeah this game's over we just lost a fucking game why is this team so bad i like if we're a 77 overall we should at least win five or six games in the season and here we are sitting at one and six because locklear can't fucking throw a football properly well, I'll just see if our defense can get stops. No, they kneel it. Obviously, that's fucking game. My fucking God, can we win a football game? I mean, yeah, I'm so ready to get Locklear the fuck out of here because he plays good throughout the games, but then he has, like, one stupid-ass little screw-up, one stupid-ass moment. Like, Braden Bohannon's out here, 155 pass yards, 63%, four touchdowns, and winning player of the game. Like, that's how fucking awful we are. Why is our defense 150? Like, what is going on? He has barely over 150 yards, and the dude is throwing, getting four touchdowns. What is that? Taking a look, I mean, 24 for 45, 265 yards, two touchdowns. You'd think this guy's having a good game, but then he throws pick after pick after fucking pick. I don't get it. And then our run game is absolutely piss poor this game. Or receiving, I mean, we have games from guys like Giovanni Garter. You have a game from Amari White. You have a solid game from Judah Azenwa, but like, dude, no one is really making a difference. No one is like putting themselves out there as the best receiving target on the team. I know we have good receivers. You know, those three I just named had good games, but man, obviously Amari White has is, is gotten a lot better. You know, he's developed himself over the off season, So that's awesome. But like, we got to figure this out. Boys, we are 0-4 in conference play, 1-6 on the season. I just don't understand this. I think our defense is just absolutely horrible. Eduardo Torres has reached his top three schools. Can you please just pick us? I mean, fucking Jones is going to transfer. That's not good. We're trying to turn it around. This is the battle of the I-10. We had this game last year against New Mexico State, so that should be a fun one, I guess. But we're probably going to lose. Checking out the recruiting, North Texas still wants this guy. So we're going to go ahead, contact friends and family, or not. DM the player. I can't do anything. What? What is that? I mean, we're not going to be able to get them if they don't. Okay, visits will become available once the recruiters narrow down the top five. Okay, for some reason, it's not letting me do jack shit with that player. We're going to have to take the L on him. I need a fucking running back. God damn it. Let me do what I fucking need to do. Oh, my God. It's so annoying. Kutera. We're not even on the fucking board for him. We need to just, like, contact friends and family. We need to start making some moves on this guy. We are targeting 16 players this year, which is obviously great. We are up there with them. So again, contacting friends and family is kind of essential to kind of getting ourselves major girly. We're right there with them. So we're going to go ahead and DM him. Finnerty, we've offered them one. We're the only ones to do that. So I think, you know, DM, DMing the player, giving us an extra push there would be good. Rick Hussein, we are still very down bad in that aspect. We're going to send the house. We're going to hit send the house on Rick Hussein for Umana. We are number one, but barely. So let's kind of maintain it. Search through the man's social media. Rico Rodriguez, we are entering the top three. Let's go ahead and contact his friends and family. We are trying to win this man over over TCU and Baylor. I might take an L on this guy. I don't know what it's doing. Why isn't it letting me? 
Okay, we'll figure this out. I can't scout him or nothing. Okay, I'm gonna scout him. We didn't get a we didn't get a gem, but I mean, we scouted him out. We only have 80 hours left, so we're gonna have to hope we can get a push for some of these guys and recuperate some hours. This is not looking great. I don't know if scouting really does anything. I really wanted to fucking search his social media, but we're gonna have to check next week and see if we can do that. Let's get into New Mexico State. Here we are, battle at the I-10. We are going to be playing at the Sun Bowl here in El Paso, Texas. I really want to get Amaro. We're gonna have to fucking suffer, maybe look through the transfer portal in the offseason if this doesn't work out. I kind of forgot to see New Mexico State's overall, but let's cook. We're not. So they're three and three, and they're one and one in their conference. I don't think they're in the I don't think they're in conference. Yet. I think they're in like the Pac-12 or like the Mountain West or something weird like that. We're gonna sim. I'll see you guys in the fourth quarter. So looking here, we are down by two possessions, which is kind of unfortunate, but at least we're not like getting our ass kicked here. We have the ball first and 10. They have the ball at our side of the field. So, I mean, if they score here, that's going to be kind of unfortunate for us. And they are going to settle for a field goal, which kind of gives us an opportunity here. We can come down, score a touchdown here in about a couple of minutes or so and have a shot. And what do you know? Skylar Locklear throwing interceptions. The game is pretty much fucking over. What is this guy doing? He's so bad. I need to move on. You are my sunshine. My only son. They get another field goal to solidify the touchdown and the touchdown slash the two-point conversion lead. Another interception. Yeah, another interception thrown by Spencer Locklear. So it's safe to say that they're... And, and then their running back is just beating our fucking ass. Goddamn, it's safe to say this game's in the fucking books. We can't win a goddamn game to save our lives. We are in an absolute dry spell and our defense gives up 30 plus points every game. Like, that is not healthy to do. Oh wow, a little too late to start scoring touchdowns, you fucking idiot. Now it's a two touchdown game, minute left, we're going for onside kicks, we're obviously not going to get it. Game after game after game, our opponent just gets into victory formation and absolutely kills us. We are one and fucking seven on the season, we have four games left, and we've only won one fucking game. Am I going to get fired? I don't know how big my contract is, but we're going to have a fucking redemption season coming up. It's going to be a banger fucking episode because we got to get these recruits in now. Man, you look at Rob Wester, junior quarterback, 298 yards, 68% completion, three touchdowns. Our defense just gets cooked game after fucking game against players. Crazy part is this is not my fault because I actually had a solid recruiting class compared to what we've been doing before. We can look at the stats here. Skylar Locklear. Three fucking interceptions. You are a 78 overall. You should not be playing like this. Again, 26 for 45, 344 yards, two touchdowns. But he seems to have the same problem that my Road to Glory player has. He just throws picks every fucking time. And I mean, shout out to Javon Jackson for making something work. I mean, 14 carries for 83 yards. He did good. And obviously, you know, Javoni Garter continues to have good games. Six catches, 118. You get a good game out of Amari White. Five catches for 80. Judah Azinwa being consistent. Four catches for 43. And shout out to Ashton Nickelberry. Like, we have our consistent weapons. It's just Skylar Locklear into the heat of the moment just doesn't know how to use our players. So it's just it's so unfortunate. I wonder if there's going to be something that comes up with a coach is like, yeah, you're probably going to get fired. Because my goodness, one in fucking seven? We cannot win a game to save our lives. We obviously have some, we're first interest in everybody. So we're going to have some really small actions to do this week considering we are first for a guy like Umana. We're not first for Hussein. And obviously our running back is kind of struggling to narrow down his schools. But that is going to be sort of, this is our bye week. So this is our opportunity to really get some recruiting done. I think I'm going to do most of mine this week. I don't know why Torres just can't pick a fucking school. Like, we literally offered him shit. We are one, though, so that's good. It's not letting me do any action. So, like, if I'm not able, if I'm not able to recruit the player, then it's kind of cooked here. No competition for Cuderera. Some competition for Gene Sherry. So we're going to you know, search his social media for the week. You know, do our due diligence. No competition for Major Gurley. No competition for Jabari Finney. Rick Hussein. There is competition for Nate Umana. I don't want to do all this yet. We can do kind of a soft sell here for Nate Umana, though. Time to get to work. That is going to be our pitch. We're going to give it to Umana. Again, I don't know what the deal is here with Omaro. It's not letting me do anything. I can't add any actions. 
for whatever reason. I don't know why it is doing that. Hopefully we can beat Northern Texas out and pick him up. And it's going to really make me mad if Northern Texas kind of creeps back in. But once we are able, once he narrows it down to the top five schools, our main objective is to offer this man a visit because we are number one in literally everyone else's list. We're actually doing really good recruiting. Like we're number one everywhere. Obviously, you know, Neumana has a lot of guys and Rico Rodriguez has no comp. So we're going to kind of leave those out. Let's move on to the next week. Man, we are reinventing this fucking program. We got to get going. So we got top five schools for Manuel Amaro. So the first order of business is to schedule him a visit. Yep, just some recruiting updates, a bunch of top five stuff. Obviously with Gene Sherry, we're getting some comp in there. Major Gurley, still fine. Rick Hussein, still fine. Same with Alejandro Cutrera. So I guess with like Gene and with Amaro, those are sort of guys that we're going to have to take some action with. As we are playing against Sam Houston, this is a big rivalry in the Conference USA. Too bad Sam Houston is 5-3 and three with a 2-2 two and two conference record, and we're just so much fucking worse. In the top 25, Northern Texas is in the top 25. That is pretty cool. No one from our conference, it looks like, is in there. I don't believe so. It's Charlotte's in there, and you have Texas State having a hell of a year. Rutgers is in there. That's a pretty cool site. Again, we are here with the recruiting. Amaro, we are number one. Let's schedule that visit. We are going to do it as soon as possible as well. We're playing Jacksonville State. We're going to kind of look at an activity to do. He's close to home, so we're going to do a family visit with him. So there you go. The visit is scheduled. I mean, if they let us do an action... They're not going to, so we're just going to schedule a visit. Looking at the overviews, I have gotten a visit done, so that's really going to make it better for me and him. We don't have to do anything with Cutrera. Gene Sherry, people are starting to kind of bite a little bit, so let's go ahead, DM the player, get some extra hours in. Major Gurley, we're fine. Jabari Finnerty, we're fine. Rick Hussein, we're fine. Nate Umana, people are getting close. People are scheduling visits. So with guys like this, we can just DM the player. I don't have to do a visit. I probably should for him, actually. We barely have fucking hours left. We're going to do his week 13, and we're going to do playing style. We're going to do that pitch, whatever that pitch means. Let's see, what is it? Playing style. So we're going to do attending the practice. We're going to have him attend a practice. We only have five hours, so we're kind of just banking on this working out for us. Here we go. Sam Houston is only a 78. They're the Sam Houston Bearcats, but boy, are they having a good season. Let's get into the game. We're actually going to Sam Houston. I think that is in Texas, I would assume. I'm not really sure, actually. I mean, that's the main source of rivalries. Sorry if my camera is a little delayed there. They don't have any special walkout, but boy, the all orange looks fucking sick, if I'm being honest here we are bowers stadium i don't know where they play yeah we're fucking one and eight or no one and seven i think no we're yeah we're one and seven so we're at least gonna play two more games i will see you guys in the fourth it's actually a really close game it would be nice to win a fucking game this year but we are going to take a look sim to the end of the game we have the ball okay wait so we okay yeah Third and six at the 36. This is a pretty big stop for the defense. They are at fourth and one. Do they go for it? And no, they kick a field goal. 18 to 13. Let's see what Locklear does. Fourth and one. What are they going to do? They are going to hit a 50 yard field goal. So now this is a pretty big drive here for Spencer Locklear. We're going to tune in here. We had a huge 30 yard reception. Wow, it's so weird seeing us go this way. We are looking to chew the clock maybe and go to OT. Is that our plan, I guess? That's interesting is we are going to have a quick out route to get a first and 10 leading us to the two minute warning. So I guess this is what's going to send us to OT. Here we go. Locklear in the pocket has a decent amount of time and he is going to throw it away, which is probably the smart thing to do. So you have the ball at the 35. We have 35 yards to go. Plenty of time to formulate a drive here. Spencer Locklear, you have all, all the resources in the world. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to chuck it up, and it is not up there. We're going to have to go for it if we don't get this. It is four down territory. Come on, Locklear. Please just step up for once. This kid is trash. God damn. He hasn't stepped up all fucking season. I mean, he's had an okay season. We can check the stats eventually, but bro, he just can't step up at all. Oh my god, this is horrible. Okay. I seriously don't know what even fucking goes into these games. Like... They don't even show the right thing on the fucking screen. What is happening? This game is so glitched. We're literally losing by fucking 15 now. Yep, this game's cooked. They're literally showing the same thing at the 35. Him losing two yards. It's not even accurate to what's happening in the game. Like, fix your shit. And there you fucking have it. Yet another loss 
for fucking UTEP. I might get fired. Like, how are we one and eight? This is fucking insane. Can y'all figure it the fuck out? I find it so goddamn insane that you can't win a fucking game. It's so bad. Like, it is actually fucking embarrassing. The player of the game is the fucking running back. I mean, 19 carries, 122 rush yards, and a tutty. That's fucking great. But, dude, figure it out, guys. Like, Lockler just does nothing but throws picks, incompletions. It's like, you got to step up at some point. This might be the most sorry quarterback I've ever fucking seen in my life. Like, come on, bro. 20 for 42. I mean, 224 yards and a tutty isn't bad. But, dude, 20 for 42 against a team that's not even that much better than us. Throws a pick per fucking usual. Our running backs, I mean, Javon Jackson, 11 carries, 65 yards. He's fucking trying, boys, but there's not much we can do. Looking at the receiving, I mean, Gardner continues to be consistent this season. Six catches, 62 yards. You get three catches, 65 yards for Amari White. You get Ashton Nickelberry going out there, three catches, 46 and a touchdown. And I mean, for a 69 overall, that man can play football. But, bro, it's just so inconsistent with us. I'm getting fucking tired of watching it. Like, man, Locklear. We have Eduardo Torres committing, and we have some top three schools for us. Again, it is a deal breaker, and like Rice is doing stuff, but we'll look at that soon. Again, our co our champion contender just dropped from a D plus to a D minus because we can't win fucking games ever. Finnerty, again, not really a lot of competition. Obviously, a little bit with Rico Rodriguez and with Umana. There is a deal breaker there, but we were able to get Dylan Choice. We reach our top three schools in between him, that Rice, and I think Arkansas State. I think that's the school. So. We're going to have to kind of take a look here, man. Torres obviously committed, which is awesome. Conference USA game against one of the best teams in the Conference USA. We have Jacksonville State at 6-3, and 4-1 and one in the conference. Let's peep the recruiting. I haven't been able to upgrade my coach because we have no fucking motion in this community. And we are still above Northern Texas. Like, again, it's not letting me do anything with him, so we're just not going to bother with that. And we're actually, like, moving farther away from them at the moment. We can kind of look around here. Okay, so he's starting to get some offers. Let's go ahead, DM the player. We're not going to go full in. We're just going to kind of do some minor things. We only have 80-something recruiting for here. We can do a little soft sale on, sell on Gene Sherry. Prove yourself. That's our pitch to Gene Sherry. We're, we're just kind of trying some stuff here. Major Gurley has a bit of an offer there. We can, we can, you know, search his social media. We can, we don't really have much room to do much else. Finnerty, people are starting to get offers. Not Finnerty, though. Hussein is from them. Let's go ahead, DM him, kind of make a push for some of these guys. Okay, it's just not letting me do anything with the players. I don't know what's wrong with this game. North Carolina, for some dumbass reason, is scooping out two stars. Why the fuck is that a thing? That's fucking annoying. With Umana here, should we, should we give him a sell? Should we? Okay, we don't have hours. Yeah, we fucking do. You're literally just lying to me. You're just flat out lying. Rico Rodriguez, we can search the man's social media. All the major actions for most of these players has been done. For Hussein, though, it's just not letting me do certain things. And it really annoys me, man. It really does. I don't know why the game is like this. Jabari Finnerty, we should be able to get no problem. Could we schedule a visit with him? This He is a four-star. Let's go ahead and do it week 13 or no let's do a week 14 against louisiana let's go ahead let's do coach prestige let's do one-on-one -on -one coaching with rick hussein get him a visit in there and then yeah we'll just have to let the rest cook for a little bit Winning against jacksonville state we are probably going to lose but they're really not that much better than us again the conference usa is a pretty competitive conference I and mean, obviously competitively bad but there's still a lot of comp to be had in the conference usa so like i mean come on we got to do something here we are here at the sun bowl which is cool to get home field advantage all right i will see you guys in the fourth quarter where we will probably be getting cooked i'm really not surprised there Let's go to the end of the game. I mean, it's just like, dude, come on. You can't even get a stop. They have 33 points going into the fourth quarter, and they just come down and score another touchdown. This game is over. I don't even know what to do. And there you have it. There was really no point of showing any of that game because we weren't competitive at all. We ended up losing by 20 to Jacksonville State. Yep, we are 1-9. and nine. This is the first episode possibly i don't know if i'm gonna finish this season out but this could be the first episode and then fucking zion turner 317 yards 65 percent completion percent completion five touchdowns that is insane is it not i mean that's fucking crazy five touchdowns against a team that is two overalls better than us it just doesn't even seem to be possible here i mean not a bad game from skyler Lockler though 19 for 36 191 yards and a touchdown for once he didn't throw a pick 
So that's all right. I'm not mad at him at all, really. I mean, good games for guys like Wayne Schrong and Javon Jackson. Like, our running backs played good. Is it the defense, I guess? I don't really know. Obviously, four catches, 58 yards, and a touchdown for Javone Garter. You get three catches for 41 for Judah Zinwa, and you get a 16-yard reception for, again, Ashton Nickelberry, who kind of makes plays. Javoni Gardner has been so consistent this season. Obviously, last year we had, I can't remember who we had, but let's look at, like, like looking at Jacksonville State, like, I don't know, dude. Like, their quarterback cooked up. 20 for 31, 317 yards, five touchdowns that's he had all passing touchdowns like and then their running backs are coming out here 18 carries 116 and then the quarterback is six carries for 49 you look at their receiving core and they have like four good receivers Dallin Wright Michael Petway Demarcus Lacey even Everett Polk going out there and getting receptions like this these guys have fucking motion out here and we just have nothing dude I literally can't level up when we keep losing games okay so we got top three schools out of Alejandro we got top three schools. So we are first in a lot of players, so that's good. So like Sherry wants us like really badly. Hussein wants us. So we're just gonna kinda do minor actions throughout the weeks with those players because we really don't have that much time. We are playing the five and five Ohio Bobcats. We're gonna check the video progress though. You know what? Let's just, sorry about the lag. Oh my god, it's lagging so bad. So we're gonna have to go ahead play Ohio real quick and that's probably going to be the end of the video we can finish off some recruiting to an extent again I just don't want that much clips like looking at the recruiting here I mean tomorrow it's looking pretty good they haven't even scheduled a visit if they would let me do stuff like this it's like come on why can't I do that that's fucking annoying bro I guess once we schedule the visit you can't do much after Cutrera has some comp we're gonna search his social media for Sherry he really doesn't have that much they did schedule a visit though which makes me wonder if we should do the same but we can't really do that so we're kind of I think we're just gonna maybe give him like a soft sell nope of course we don't have enough nope we don't have enough to do anything apparently the fuck major girly air force is getting up there so we're gonna contact friends and family for him we're gonna make sure we're good finnerty we don't have to make time for obviously we can search the social media for hussein even though it doesn't let us do anything i don't really understand what is wrong with this game i guess once you get a visit going he is so close to committing oh my god we're so close to getting him. Rico Rodriguez. Can we do a soft sell? All right. We might as well just do a soft sell here on Rico. Just make it a little bit better for my boy. Yeah, that is going to do it for recruiting this week. We're going to play this game, check the recruiting report, and then going into the final week is, I guess, when we're going to start the next episode. Probably pretty strange, I know. Ohio is actually pretty good, too. So I think, they, I think they're in the MAC, maybe. Here we are at the Sun Bowl. It is pretty nice to see that we have home field advantage, but that's not going to matter based on how bad our season is or has been. And I feel like it's going to actually be interesting to see next episode if we end up getting like fired or like they, you know, address this. So that's probably a good way to start next episode. This is one of the first times in the entire video that we went in the fourth quarter actually leading the game and especially against a team like this. That's pretty cool. So let's see what happens. If they have the ball at their own 19, I'm just going to kind of check back in in a little bit. Man, we're putting in the work on defense. So they're going to go ahead and punt it to us. I think really what we need to do is chew the clock down, maybe go down and kick a field goal or something. So come on. Boys, we have a solid chance at winning this. If we can stay in field goal range and continue to kind of take some clock down, that would be awesome. And we knock down the field goal buzz. Flabiano goes out there. So now we need to get a stop. And I'm actually going to go on slow to see, you know, to end the video, how our defense does. So they start from the touchback range. They have a minute 48 to get in the end zone and get an extra point to win the game. Come on, defense. Oh my god, we pick him off. I don't know why he ran backwards, but we picked him off. That's game. That's game. We just knocked out Ohio. Let's go. We actually get a dub this episode. So we went one and five this episode and one and four in the first episode of the season. So probably not the greatest, but it's fine, man. I don't really care. Just get a dub, I guess. John Burris, the third, our senior cornerback, going in there and just lurking the fuck out of the QB. Look at that play. Why couldn't we do that all year? And it looks like Skyler Locklear can kneel the ball out, and we actually win a fucking game, which probably isn't really that good, a good of a look. I don't know why we were running, running the ball. We can actually get a field goal up, make sure we're up by two possessions, and that is game. And the fact that we even let them score a fucking touchdown, oh my god, we have to get this onside. Do we get it? We actually get it, and it looks like we're going to kneel the ball. That was fucking scary. Our defense almost sold the game for us. We're 2-9, and nine, baby. Let's go. We get a nice little dub. Look at your boy, GZTV, standing there at the head coaching position. We actually had a really good second quarter there. 
We had the same amount of points in the second quarter as we did in the entire second half. Skyler Lockler, my boy, 261 yards, 67% completion, two touchdowns. Finally, your boy kind of has a breakout game, and we lead the squad to victory. The mountains in the background. It is illustrious here at UTEP. I don't even know how I'm pulling three stars. The fact that we're doing that is crazy because we are not a very winning program. But great game for Skyler Locklear. 24 for 36, 261 yards. Had two touchdowns. He did throw a pick. It's fine, though. I don't, I don't really care. Not really that good of a game running the ball. A couple good receiving games. Corey Foster had nine catches, 95 yards in a tutty. Five catches, 78 yards for Judah Azenwa. Three catches, 31 yards. Again, another solid game for Giovanni Garterer with a touchdown. And Amari White had a couple receptions for 31. So we had some guys kind of step up this week. So that's pretty awesome. We are still not winning a single conference game. That is actually going to get us leveled up, which will help with the recruiting. I'm going to sim the week and see how the recruiting process goes. And we are going to end the video. We get Alejandro Cotrera, Major Gurley committed, Rick Hussein committed, Nate Umana committed, so many people just committed, and now we get Manuel Amaro and Rodrigo picking their top three schools. Championship contender went up, not because, not just because we won a game for the first time in like seven games, maybe eight, but because, you know, hell commits. We had four people commit in one week. We have Manuel Amaro, we have Rico Rodriguez. We only lost on a couple of players recently. We're just going to get into the final week where we are playing Conference USA against Louisiana Tech. They've only won, the only games they've won were in conference play, so that's kind of interesting. We'll look to improve its 0-7 conference record. Let's see. In the last video, I'm going to do my upgrading my coaching skills because we can actually do that for once. Yeah, we can do it for once, which is great, obviously. And we are going to get the receiving game done. And we are going to start on the running game, even though we've already kind of recruited our guys and we've strategically done things. And don't worry, boys, we will get into the recruiting that week and kind of see the fallout of the season. Again, I know that's kind of weird to end it before the final game of the season, but I kind of want to see the fallout of the season and how the staff thinks I did, if I should stay on the team. If not, I don't remember how long my contract is, but I'm out, guys. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Have been fun at college here. Going to be awesome gonna try to post every day as high quality as possible just posted a mutt video but i gotta get to bed i had a long day of you know doing homework doing different stuff louisiana tech bulldogs coming at you next week in the conference usa let's see if we can pull all of our recruits i'm out guys have a good rest of your night